hot. Hi, welcome to Framelines. Josh here. Um, Shane, Taylor and I started this channel nearly a year ago now. Uh, we intended to make a lot of videos together, but that hasn't panned out. But uh, if you want to check out some of our other videos we both made over the last 12 months, please do check them out. Uh, please do like and subscribe. Um, today, I'm going to be looking at some of my favorite photo books that I picked up over the last 12 months. Um, three books in particular that have really inspired me and I've really enjoyed looking through. Um, I'm also going to have a quick look at uh, something completely different. I actually updated the software on my iPhone and got the new kind of raw update and I'm actually super impressed by that so I thought I'd have a quick look at some of the pictures I've been able to get with that as well. So a bit of a mishmash today but why not? So the first book I want to talk about is Perfect Strangers by Melissa O'Shaughnessy. Um, so I've been traveling to New York kind of once a year if I can for the last five or six years. Um, I always end up going with this kind of thought like, oh, I'm going to take some great street photos. I'm going to go hit the streets, get some great shots. But uh, funnily enough, that's not really doable with just a week in a city. Um, I think you really have to kind of embed yourself in the city, live there, really kind of know the area well. Um, Melissa's book is just packed with street photos taken around New York over the last seven years. So considering that New York City has always been a sort of hub of street photography, I realized that I don't really own many contemporary New York street photography books. So when I saw that Melissa was putting this together, I had to pick it up. So this book is a collection of photos that Melissa O'Shaughnessy has taken over the, on the streets of New York over the last seven years. Through her curious and quirky vision, we witness the play of human activity on the glittering sidewalks of the city. Woven into her cast of characters are the lonely, the soulful and the proud. She has fallen for them all perfect strangers. The book is a celebration of contemporary city life as well as a homage to the chaotic rush of the city. The intersection of businessmen and tourists, shoppers and grand dames with families frozen in confusion, wonder, pain, frustration, sometimes even joy, sometimes humour. So the book itself is absolutely packed full of images. I think it's over 100 pages, lots of double page spreads, really busy, tightly packed frames. It really conveys the kind of like chaotic feel of walking down a busy street in New York City. The real kind of, it has a real kind of tempo. It's really fast paced. Um, absolutely love just looking through this book. I've owned it for about a month now and I'm still kind of finding new little like pieces in the pictures that I haven't seen before. Um, I really like that there's some humor as well. Uh, this picture in particular, the uh, birthday boy badge and the guy looking kind of forlorn, um, that's probably one of my favorites in the book. I also just watched in an interview between Melissa O'Shaughnessy and Gus Powell where they discussed the book. She said at one point that the aim in street photography for her is to get a scene not looking quite as chaotic as it is, but to convey that chaos. So you can really see that come across in the pictures where it's, it is chaos, but everybody's quite neatly arranged and you can really kind of tap into all the details quite nicely. Absolutely adore this book. Probably one of my favorites I've picked up this year, um, especially with COVID and everything and how I used to love going to visit New York. It's been great to kind of see such a kind of intensely packed version of kind of street photography in New York. I think Melissa really nicely captures New York through her own eyes. It's really refreshing to see that. You can tell the amount of work that's gone into this book, the amount of hours and miles she's walked in order to get these pictures. So uh, yeah, absolutely love this one. So the next book I wanted to talk about is All That Life Can Afford by Matt Stewart. Just making sure you can appreciate that cover there. Love that. Look at that. Oh boy. Um, this is the second edition of this book. Matt first released this book a few years ago and I missed out, unfortunately. I was super gutted about that. But then when I saw he was um, making a second edition with his publishing company, Plague Press, and also in collaboration with Satanta Books, I pre-ordered it straight away. Super excited to receive it. And then it just turned up a few days ago and I've been having a flick through pretty much every day. Um, it's really safe to say that Matt Stewart's photography has had a huge influence on me. Um, I really love looking for those kind of strange serendipitous moments around London, the kind of humour and kind of just absurd things that can happen in, in London um, and anywhere, obviously, of course. But um, yeah, love this book. Let's have a little flick through. So yeah, as I was saying, uh, this is the second edition of Matt Stewart's first book. It has been totally redesigned and it has a brand new sequence of images. Matt's photographs explore those rare magical moments when people, objects and locations work so perfectly together to bring images which explore the tender moments and human life in a busy capital city. Injected with humour, wit and boldness, 
Matt Stewart's street photography has gained global recognition for its brilliance and unique quality. So yeah, you can see there's some of my all-time favorites in here, the uh, peacock in the skip, um, this picture with the uh, the pigeons and the legs. I absolutely love photographing pigeons and yeah, absolutely adore this picture. So yeah, really happy to get my hands on this. I think there are still a few copies left through Satanta Books website, so I'll leave a link down below to that one. So the last book I wanted to look at is The Great North Road by Paul Graham. I adore this book. I think it probably is my favorite book I've picked up all year. Um, the first two books I looked at were very much street photography. This is more of a documentary style book. Spanning the full length of England and into Edinburgh, Graham traveled repeatedly along the Great North Road with a large format camera to record the people, buildings and landscapes of early 1980s Britain. This book is now 40 years old and as much as it is a piece of art it is very much also a historical document or even a uh, lesson on the years of Margaret Thatcher's government in the 80s and the UK's declining industrial base. I not only love the pictures in this book but I have also learned a lot about the UK and the Great North Road which I really didn't know anything about so in that sense it's really been the kind of whole package for me as a photo book so yeah I can't recommend this one enough. So yeah that's The Great North Road by Paul Graham. I think there are still a few copies around, so I'll leave a link down below to that one as well. <clears throat> and lastly, yeah, fascinating stuff. I made a video recently about taking pictures on my phone. I love taking pictures with my phone. I always have. I just updated the software on my iPhone and I got the new Apple Pro Raw update. And I have to say, I'm blown away. Um, the amount of detail and kind of dynamic range you can now get from a phone is crazy. So I thought I'd show a few pictures I've taken around my local area. Probably going to be doing this a lot more over the next few weeks, seeing as we're back in lockdown effectively in London. So uh, yeah, here are a few pictures I've been taking with my phone. Let me know what you think. I'm blown away by the detail, etc. So um, yeah, take a look. Um, I'm going to leave the video there, so it'll be kind of slideshow to see you through. But thanks for watching along. Hope you enjoyed it. Please do check out some of those books if you can. And please remember to like and subscribe and see you next time.